Now, Granada Romance is in the air on Blind Date. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's Blind Date, and here is your host, Miss Scylla Black. <laughs> Thank you, hello, and welcome. You know, when I was young, pardon. <laughs> I'll tell you, when I was young, when I was a very young girl, I told my parents that my ambition was to see the world. They bought me an atlas. <laughs> Aww. Aww. But right now, let's meet three lads looking for a blind date, and here they are. <laughs> Don't be proud tonight, haven't they, girls? Yeah. Let's start with you, number one. What's your name and where do you come from? My name's Kevin, and I come from Buckinghamshire. Do you know what, Kevin? We haven't had any proper Kevins on the show for ages. You haven't lived. I know we haven't lived. Um, a good representative of all of them. They're not the fools that they're made out to be. Oh, I know. Honest. I know. What do you do for a living, Kev? Oh, I'm a self-employed bricklayer. Oh, a brickie? Aye. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> no, that's, that's what the brickies usually do. Are you one of those fellas that, you know, on, the, on a building site, that when a lovely girl passes by, you do one of them whistles? They whistle at me. They do. I can them off. Oh, hey. Aye, hey. Oh, you've got a good physique. We can't see it tonight, can we? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind about me. Kevin, what girls? If you could have any girl whistling after you, who would you go for? A combination yeah. of Gaina Goodman as a pastry girl or oh, is she... Victoria Wood. The... Victoria Wood's... I mean, oh, yeah, well, Victoria's very, very beautiful face, great Not personality. Personality, she's got to make me laugh. Well, she'll probably be watching this show tonight. Well, yeah, she but is. concentrate on Blind Date. You right, might I be shall. sick tonight. Enjoy it, Kevin. Okay, thank you. See you later. Hello, number two. Hello, Scylla. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name and where do you come from? Um, my name's Nigel and I come from London. Terrible, terrible. Nigel. Yeah. All the names are in tonight. We've got a Kevin, we've even got a Nigel. And you don't look like a Nigel, actually, Nigel. I know. I scream like mad when my mum christened me, but she didn't uh, take any notice. Ah, but no, you got that. Ah. Uh, Nigel, what's your job? Um, I'm a low pressure purveyor of financial services. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? Life insurance salesman, to me and you. Yeah. <laughs> what about girls? If you could insure anybody in the world, who would it be? Oh, without a doubt. Maybe. There's only one woman, Fiona Fullerton. What has Fiona uh, got that nobody um, else has? Well, I don't know. She's not like my normal type of woman, but she's just, she's just wonderful. She's just always smiling, always happy. She's got those lovely eyes. Have you noticed her eyes? She's always in awe. No, I just she's think just she's lovely. Lo I know her she very well, and she's a lovely girl. She is. <laughs> <laughs> she will thank you for saying she's a little bit old as well. I'm sure she <laughs> loves that. Nigel, enjoy blind dates. I certainly will. Evening. Hello, number three. What's Hello, your name Lisa. and where do you come from? My name is Andrew from Derbyshire. <laughs> come on, Andrew, tell an old woman what you do for a living. <laughs> I run um, an aircraft agency for aircraft engineers. <laughs> So you're clever with it, are you? Not particularly, they are. I hope they are, anyway. Well, is it your own business, yeah, it is. is it? Oh, yeah. gosh. He's got money, he's rich, this <laughs> one. <laughs> if you could take anyone up in your aeroplane, who would it be? Felicity Kendall. Ah. Oh. Ten years ago. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> not nice. I thought, I mean, I thought, I mean, she's gorgeous anyway, but I thought old was in. It is, yes, but not... I mean, I didn't quite. know old was knackered. I mean, I thought <laughs> old was in. <laughs> but she's got that lovely face. Yes, she has, and she's down to it. Well, all three of you, I wish you the best of luck. Enjoy Blind Date. I'll see you in a moment, all right? See you later. <laughs> Which 
one of those three lads will be lucky tonight. It all depends on one girl, and here she is. She's from North Yorkshire, and her name's Juliet. Come in, Juliet! <laughs> I absolutely adore that outfit. It's absolutely fantastic, Juliet. Thank you. Now, I know what you do for a living, Juliet, but I can't pronounce it because it's something in French, isn't it? Tell everybody what you do for a living. I'm a soigneur. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't understand it in, when I read it. A soigneur. Yes. It's now, what does a soigneur do? It's French for a cycling masseur. <laughs> to go on the bikes already. <laughs> it's fun, yeah. So you massage the cyclist's legs, do you? Yeah. I love men's legs. Yeah, I like men's legs. I mean, the smoother, the better. The smoother, oh, yes, because I believe the cyclists, they do shave the legs, don't they? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm dying to know why. I mean, is, what, why do they shave the legs? They used to say it was more aerodynamic. Yeah. And another reason they used to say it was in case they had a crash, um, it's easier to treat an injury, but basically, each other, they're just poses. Well, <laughs> well, you can ask some questions tonight beyond those screens. We've got three Romeos for you, Juliet. <laughs> so, in your own time, fire away. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Juliet. Right. Are you ready for this? Question number one to number one. I think a man's appearance is greatly improved if he has shaven legs. <laughs> As it shows more muscle definition, smoother to the touch. So if I asked you to shave your legs, what would you say? Number one. I'd say no to shaving, but you'd be quite welcome to wax them any time you like. <laughs> as long as you pulled the wax off really fast, because I know the pain is intense, but the pleasure is immense. <laughs> The same question to number two. Well, Juliet, um, as I've never shaved my legs, yet that is, you're going to have to come around and show me how it's done. But one thing I do promise is that I'll provide the essential, essential oils for the essential massage. Um. Which essential oil do you prefer? <laughs> Olive oil. I don't know. <laughs> right, the same question to number three. Hello, Juliet. Hello. I would shave my legs, but how would I turn the barber's chair upside down? <laughs> right. Question number two. What message would le you leave on my answer phone that would make certain I would return your call? To number two. Um, I just have to leave. Hi, Juliet. Need to see you. My legs have gone all stubbly and they keep laddering me cycling. <laughs> Red, so I'll be able to stitch up your ladder. So. Right, the same question to number three. I would say, hi, Juliet. I hate opera, you hate jazz, and I need you now. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> right, the same question to number one. Hi, John. The message will read, Congratulations, you've come first in the competition to go out the man of your dreams. All you have to do is ring 0898 and ask for numero uno. Uh, <laughs> right, my final question. If I had the opportunity to change the format of Blind Date and gave you the chance to ask me one question, what would it be and why? This time to number two. Well, I'm afraid it'll have to be something like a really normal sensible type of blind date question <laughs> like um if i was to ensure one part of my body it would be my albatross if you were a drink what type of tree would you grow on <laughs> I 
no, I know. Yes, yes, he's mental, yes. <laughs> That's why I'm a picker and you're sat at that side. <laughs> right, the same question to number one. The reason I'm on this show is because I'm terribly lonely and desperately ugly. <laughs> the, reason, the question I'd ask you is, what's wrong with you? Number three. Hmm. You like men with shaven legs. What yes, would you we do? do? We do. We do. What would you do for a hairy chest? <laughs> what would I do for a hairy chest? Probably as plastic. As long as it's not painful. <laughs> you took the worst drive out of my mouth. Number four. <laughs> it's not a stick on hairy chest, is it? No, not at all. Don't you try and rip it off either. <laughs> Juliet, those are the three questions you've asked, and um, I don't know about you, but I'm as clear as mud of who I'm choosing to go on the blind date with. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I yes. If I was in your shoes, I wouldn't like to pick any of them. <laughs> I'm only joking, but here's our Graham with a quick reminder. Well, Julius, will your blind date be dream man number one? He says he's desperately lonely and ugly. <laughs> Sounds more like a nightmare, doesn't it? <laughs> Stubbly Lake number two. Out cross that quenches your thirst and has branches all over the place. <laughs> or maybe you'd prefer number three to be your coffee mate. The man with the short, fat, hairless legs. <laughs> this is yours. Who's it going to be, Juliet? Number one, number two, or number three? Tell us. Number two. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to say, they are all gorgeous. But you want to have a look at the two that you turned down? Yes. I think you better. First of all, you turned down number three. He's the one with money. Is he? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My mother will go mad. <laughs> you turned down number three, and that was Andrew from Derbyshire. Come in, Andrew. Number one, the lovely Kevin from Buckinghamshire. Come in, Kevin! Julia, <laughs> what have you done? But you heard from the audience, he's a very popular man. You chose. <laughs> you chose number two. And that was Nigel from London. Come in, Nigel! Julia, too. Yes, it's good. Well, who's going to choose where you're going on your blind date? No, 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 I chose you, so I'll give you. All right, then. So if I get it wrong, you can blame me, yeah? That's right. I will put this one in the middle. All middle right. for diddle. Middle for diddle. Uh, middle for diddle. Middle for diddle. Where? Where are you going? A trip to Istanbul. Oh, fantastic. No, I don't need one. I don't need one of those. Oh, isn't that? Ah, oh, that's a lovely compliment because it says down here you're going to have a real thirsty life, obviously. You're going to see a bit of belly dancing. <laughs> now, you're going to have a fabulous trip to Istanbul. Oh, I hope so. um, yeah. Will you come back and tell us how you got it? Of course. Oh, yeah. Super. I can feel it in my bones. Mm -hmm. This is going to work. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Juliet and Nigel. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Frankie and Will spent their blind date on the island of Gibraltar. 
<laughs> Come on, try and look attractive. Try, try, you can do it harder. Yes! <laughs> I want to see some monkeys. Apart from you. <laughs> Did you get that? Did romance blossom on the rock, or at the end of the day, was it hard going? Shall we find out? I think Frankie picked me because of the noise the audience were making, <laughs> and of course my natural wit and charm. <laughs> Why else? Well, when the screen went back, I thought he's so big and fuzzy because he had these really fuzzy <laughs> arms and hair everywhere. I thought, oh my God. <laughs> He's wearing dungarees. But it was quite good in the <laughs> thought After the two had gone by, I thought, well, this is the best one. You should, this should be good. This should be a laugh. When I saw Frankie for the first time, my reaction was, oh, my God, what is she wearing? <laughs> and I thought, my God, she's so small. When he first saw my trousers, I think he thought they were a bit wild. But he, he, did, he did compliment me on my clothes. So that was quite nice. He said, oh, I like that top and I like that jacket or whatever. So I... I think he did. I think he liked my clothes. If Frankie has a dress sense, it must be masked under all those layers of. <laughs> oh. well, I think she's actually sponsored by Oxfam. Uh, it's really not my cup of tea dressing up in old 70s clothes. Me and Will had an ongoing sort of insult match going. It wasn't really insults. We just took the Mickey out of each other. Well, I took the Mickey out of him um, to start off with, because that's the, I, I feel more comfortable. I can feel comfortable with people doing that. At no stage in the date did I feel there was any competition between Frankie and I, other than who could be the rudest to the other in a short space of time. One of Will's best points is that he's just very, he's very funny and he's very easy to be with. If I was to make Frankie less boring, I would plug her into the mains and blast her with 240 volts. Oh. Bring her to life. Will's jokes are absolutely atrocious. They're just so unfunny. If Frankie did have any passion, it was very heavily hidden, and I never found any passion in her at all. I consider myself to be quite a plucky, passionate, whatever guy. And she was very cold, fish-like, unemotional. 
I might have dented Will's ego, though it's not really in his personality to get upset by me not fancying him. But I think the girls usually go for his blonde, hunky look. And you might have been a bit surprised I didn't fall madly in love with him. So that might have upset him a little bit. Frankie worries a lot about her self-image, and it's her primal motivating force, which is one of the reasons we came into conflict, because I really don't worry about my self-image. And I relax. <laughs> Changing Will's physical appearance or fashion taste wouldn't really change anything, I don't think, because I'm not that shallow that I think, oh, if you had a nicer nose, I might fancy you. But I think just two personalities who weren't quite right for each other. And I, I wouldn't want him to change just so that I would fancy him, because I think he's pretty cool as he is. I got a buzz from meeting Frankie, but not a romantic buzz. It was the buzz of meeting someone new, but... It could have been a much bigger buzz, and it was more of a squeak than a buzz at the end of the day. Oh, yes. oh, Will, Will, what have you done, Chuck? I mean, at the top, you said you thought she was, she picked you because of your charming wit and, you know, personality. I'm not altogether serious. Well, you did say that. I mean, on there, I mean, it looks as yeah. if you've got the personality of Saddam Hussein. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <yeah. laughs> well, how did you feel about all, all that gunge he said about you, Frankie? I think he was trying so hard to sound impressive that he just got a bit <laughs> carried away. But, I mean, what's all this about the 240 belts? Yeah, sure. Well, it's just, it's oh, no. just <laughs> getting all outraged here. I think it's just a question of opening up and being more relaxed and, you know, relax. <laughs> See? I'm pretty relaxed. You're tense now. <laughs> I know, but what, I, I would feel a little bit tense. In fact, I don't know how she, you know, control herself with that pillar. Sat <laughs> I mean, I would have shut that me. down, you gob, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think you that. Too late now. No, 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 no. I stand by what I say. I stand by what I say. Yeah. Had an amazing time. Got on. Yeah. Got on together. Yeah, sounds like it. Just not off together, really. That's all it is, isn't it? But had a great time. No, but you were a bit nervous, Knuckle. I mean, you did describe her. Why you... did you describe her as, you know, fish like? Cold fish like? Well, it's just upset true. if I didn't fancy her. Oh, oh, now the truth is coming out. Now, tell me more, Frank. We well, thought I was fish because I didn't jump on him and rip his clothes off or something. Oh, that's if that's nice. fish like, fine, I was a bit fishy then, really. <laughs> but why didn't you make the effort? I, I made the effort. Did you? Yeah, it's like, it's like hugging a fridge or something, isn't it? <laughs> that's so little, charming. Little, little fridge. Um, I think it's just because every time he sort of approached me and sort of got really? all, you know, well, it's fair enough, isn't it, really? <laughs> but um, yeah, I sort of got right. a bit put off and quickly ran away. But my interests were entirely honourable. Well, I didn't have any interests at all. <laughs> well, Will, well, I'm sorry, you did ask for no, it. No, that's fine. I know, and, and you were honest, and we admire you for your honesty, especially the 200 belt bit, you know, the 204. <laughs> Are you sure you haven't stuck a finger in one of the sockets tonight? For judging by your ear, it's <laughs> <laughs> well, there's only one thing left for me to say is thank you both for coming back Thanks on the blind date. Well, thank you for having us. <laughs> I'm not going to get out of here alive, am I? No. <laughs> the audience are going to kill me if you do. I'll, I'll protect you, ladies and gentlemen, Frankie and Will. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to take a break right now, but we will be back to meet the lucky lad who has to choose one of these three gorgeous girls. So, see you in a couple of minutes. The world is just one giant package full of millions of little packages. Get an eye full of these. All looking for somewhere to go. Sydney, not you, the place. No one 
you have a desperately important parcel, no matter how big or how small. You'd better shape up, honey, by calling DHL. Ain't no mountain high enough. DHL. You know it's arrived the moment it's sent. Cripes, that was quick. You're welcome, Sidney. Free in the people this Sunday, snooker special. Now that's really interesting. It's your complete guide to all the top players and the big tournaments for 1992. Plus, world champion Alison Fisher shows women the sexy way to score. Now that really is interesting. <laughs> Buy the people with your free snooker special this Sunday. you've joined us just as your Granadaland Ford dealers have put their prices on ice. A wonderful chance to see these Escort and Orion Encores in action. Beautiful wheel trims, stereo radio cassettes and sunroofs. Oh, a marvellous performance and what do the judges think they're worth? Quite amazing, even better scores than last spring. So if you want one, get your skates on. Granadaland Ford dealers, steering you towards a better deal. If you could have a cup of coffee with half the caffeine and all this slow roasted rich taste, you'd be tempted to have another. If you could have a cup of coffee with half the caffeine and all this slow roasted rich taste, you'd be tempted to have another. New Maxwell House Light. Maxwell House Richness with half the caffeine. When you've got a miserable cold, trust warming Lemsip to soothe, relieve, and comfort you. Original Lemsip. Three-way action with the taste of whole lemons. Take comfort. Take Lemsip. your boyfriend's up to no good is if he comes to work every morning from a different direction <laughs> yeah think about that i had to i had to <laughs> it's clear as mud to me but now let's meet three lovely girls each looking for a blind date here they are <laughs> Hello, number one. What's your name and where do you come from? Hello, Stella. My name's Kim and I'm from Glasgow. <laughs> Lovely Kim from Glasgow. What do you do up there, Kim? I'm a student. Oh, what are you studying? Maths and economics. <laughs> and clever with it. Now, you've done a bit of travelling in your time. You like a bit of debating, <laughs> don't you? Yes. Last Christmas, I was over at the World Champion debating ship. Oh, and Toronto, Canada. What about fellas in your life, the men in your life? I know you oh. haven't got any, but have oh, you had no, any? The, the minute, the minute. I think we'd all have to look like Andy Garcia, I think, maybe. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. What's Andy got that nobody else has got? He's just, just Italian, do you know? You know, the Italian stallions. Oh. <laughs> yeah. so completely. That dark, lovely. Yes. Yeah, so and the eyes. The eyes, dark eyes, oh, and dark yeah. hair. Oh, He's lovely. Oh, hey, Andy, where are you? I want to meet you myself. <laughs> Kim, enjoy blind Thanks day. very much. Hello, number two. What's your name and where do you come from? Hello, Stella. My name's Samantha and I come from Sunny Dorset. <laughs> and Samantha, I have to say, what you're nearly wearing is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much. Who made it? Did I did myself. <laughs> 
Oh, did you? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be lovely when it's finished, you know. <laughs> I've got my dad says all the time when I walk Does out the front door. Well, who would you take after then? Um, my mother. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But she doesn't go around the kitchen do the chips like that. Does no, no. no. <laughs> Your chip ready. <laughs> well, your mother must be very attractive as well. What about fellas? Come on, your ideal men. Um, I generally like a man to have a nice personality, um, fun to be with and make me laugh. Um, but generally, someone like Rob Lowe or perhaps Jason Donovan. What's Jason got? He's got the lovely blonde hair. He's got blonde hair and yeah. the Australian accent. And the Aussie yeah. accent. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> well, enjoy blind date tonight, Sam. I shall see you tomorrow. Hello, number three. What's your name? Where'd you come from? Hi, sir. I'm Hannah and I'm from Hertfordshire. <laughs> from half it's difficult yeah. to say that isn't it it's Hannah not really. from half where I come from it's Anna from half <laughs> <laughs> drop the H's should have said that what do you do in half well actually I live there but I'm studying in Guildford at the university what are you studying psychology but you don't yeah. want you don't want to go into that do I you? don't know you, you want to be a model I wouldn't mind but I've tried for years and years never got anywhere so I thought well <laughs> tell us about the men that's not in your life at the minute that well, you'd like them to be if they look like Brad Pitt, they'd be doing well. Who was it, Bob Pitt? Ba Brad. Brad Pitt. He was in the Levi advert, the most recent. Oh, he was in the... Oh, now you're talking. Yeah. What? Well, I never got... I never got beyond the crutch. I never... Really <laughs> <laughs> That's the advert. That's the... You only see the time. You see more of him in Selma and Louise. You oh, you the full wax then. Oh, you, you get oh, the yeah. full wax mm. in Selma and Louise. <laughs> Well, I hope all three of you get the full wax tonight. So do I. Enjoy blind day. Thank you. I shall see you all in a mo. I'll wait for this one. I've seen him. He's gorgeous. See you later. Well, there we are. Three girls in search of a blind date. And here he is. His name's Anu. And he's from Sussex. Come in, Anu. Lovely, lovely, lovely job. Anu. I said that. Anu. I mean, it's like that name, isn't it, from Mork and Mindy? Anu, no. <laughs> That's what I usually say, but it's, it's Anu. Anu, God bless you. <laughs> Anu. Anu, I knew you're very heavily into martial arts, aren't you? Um, yeah, I've been training for a while. And you love the mystique, don't you? You love uh, I, I am a, a mystic indeed. A mystic palmist, sort of. You, uh, you actually do earn a living at reading. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a student at the moment, and it's just to, uh, to sort of supplement my grant. And uh, as I say, we, we do it at weekends. I know you do. I'm interested in tonight because you've got three questions there. I mean, are you going to be able to tell after the first one, when you've asked the first one, who are you going to go for? Uh, Only I don't know. time I will tell. Fire away with the first one. Okay, good evening, ladies. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, I'm in my final year at university, but I'm rather lazy when it comes to studying. How would you persuade me to knuckle down to it instead of taking you out and having a good time? And that's to number one, please. Hello, Anu. Hello. Uh, I think I would have to say, to persuade you, I think I'd say I'd have to join you. Because I'm actually a mathematics student myself. And I'm now currently in my seventh year, and it's only supposed to be a four-year course. So I think <laughs> I'll get a fair bit to go here. And number two, please. Hello. Hi. Well, I used to be a nanny, believe it or not, um, so I'm very used to getting little boys to do their homework. So... <laughs> but I'm, 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 not that, I'm not that little a boy, though. I mean, how no? would you deal with me? <laughs> well, let's, let's strike a deal. You promised me three hours of studying, and I promise you three hours of play. And when I say play, I mean play. Well, done. <laughs> I think I could shake on that, definitely, <laughs> And number three as well, please. Hi, Anu. Hi. <laughs> I'm also a final year at university, so we could study together. And I think you'd find that a night in with me would be an education in itself. Woo! 
Okay, moving on to number two. I once worked on the door of a nightclub where there was a very strict entrance policy and dress code. How would you have persuaded me to admit you on a busy evening? And that's to number three, please, first. Well, I'd turn up in my trench coat, I think, and tell you that I was wearing my birthday suit underneath. And then I'd ask if I could come in and celebrate my birthday with everyone. <laughs> That takes a lot of business. That does, I know, that's number three, the flasher, yes. And number two? Well, I'm a part-time dancer at the moment, so once you see in what I'm wearing now, you'll be begging to let me come in. Yeah. And number one as well, please. Well, I know. In my time, I, I do a bit of debating at university, and I've managed to talk my way right across the Atlantic, so I'm sure I wouldn't have any problem in talking my way around you. Ooh. This is going to be very difficult. I know it's going to be difficult. It all hangs on this last question, doesn't it? Yep, here goes. In my spare time, I'm a mystic palmist, and I can tell a lot about people from their hands and how they use them. What would your hands tell me about you? <laughs> and that's to number two, please. Well, firstly, if you looked at my hands, you'd notice I've got lovely, lovely long nails. And that will tell you all in itself what a tigeress I really am. <laughs> and number three, please. Well, let's take a look at my palm. The lifeline looks very strong, and the love line is positively throbbing here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can see pots on the horizon as well. <laughs> And number one, please, the same question. Well, my hands would tell you that I'm not married, I'm not engaged. So why don't you give me a ring sometime then? Oh, dear. Well, if only I could get their palms here. Yes, well, no, you can't have the palms. You can have one set of palms. You've got to make up your mind now. But don't do that until you've heard our Graham with that quick reminder. Anu, will you choose chatty number one? As a mathematician, she's a girl you can really count on. <laughs> or will you go for Twinkle Toad number two? She's a lovely bit of homework. Who can't wait to get her claws into you? <laughs> or about Flash number three, the heart throbber who says she hasn't got anything on. Or is that just a bare-faced lie? <laughs> the decision is yours. Of the show for the audience in the studio and back home as well. We're all dying to know who are you going to pick? Well, it's been difficult, but my intuition tells me number three. Yeah! <laughs> I know, tell me, was it the throbbing? It was a number of things, and uh, maybe that had something to do with it. Right. Oh, well, the two that you so turned It was a down. very difficult choice. So. Oh, wait till you see the tassels of number two. <laughs> and the lovely, lovely voice, that lovely Scottish accent. You turned her down, first of all. That was number one, and that was our Kim from Glasgow. Come in, Kim, the debater. <laughs> And you also turned down number two, and that was our Samantha with her tassels from Dorset. Come in, Samantha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you match your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Well, as I said, they match her eyes. They do, the tassels. She's a disco dancer, and she's a, well, a nanny as well, looked after kids, but... There's the date you turned down, here's the one this you picked. And you won't be disappointed. Here's your date for the season. You chose number three. That was Hannah from Hertfordshire. Come in, Hannah. Look at those eyes. 
See those lashes? Close your eyes a minute. Look, look at those lashes. Mm -hmm. they? Mm -hmm. They're gorgeous. <laughs> You're gobsmacked, aren't you? <laughs> what do you yeah. think of our Hannah? In, Annie? <laughs> I trust my mystic powers now. <laughs> Fully. You do. You're going to read her hand afterwards. <laughs> I would I'd bet you'd love to know where you're going on your blind date. Oh. It's all in the hand. Quality today. It's the right no, no, one. No, no, Okey doke. Where are you going? I'll take this one. Right. Where's your hair? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I hope you're not going wow. on the black wall front. What? Wow, wow. A trip to Denmark. <laughs> wow. Denmark and are you going to get the business? A champagne flight to Denmark? Visit a Viking settlement? <laughs> In the evening you'll visit a casino and have a flutter there. Do you Lovely. like that? Yes, absolutely. You no, know, put up, you know, ten bob on. Ten bob. That shows my age, doesn't it? Put fifty p on number twelve for me. Will you do that? Oh yes. Just come back yes, and tell us will. all about it, ladies and gentlemen. Anu and Hannah. See you next week. <laughs> another break but we will be back to join our golden goodies Clarence and Catherine on their blind date in France and here's the moment Clarence chose Catherine last week well I won't keep you in suspense right. any longer because here she is your very own blind date for this evening you chose number two and that was the lovely Catherine from Edinburgh come in Catherine <laughs> Sunday, you can collect two more of my brand new recipes. Look for the Easy Clean Cookery card, free with You magazine and the mail on Sunday. Mmm, something smells good. I wonder what she's cooking. I feel a little investigation's coming on. Now then, come on George, clues, clues. What is she, a magician or what? Oh no, she's doing beef madras. Oh. One of their favourites. Absolutely no chance of any leftovers. George? <laughs> Delicious Madras curry sauce. By George, it's Coleman's. Huh? As soon as you feel you're starting a cold, reach for soothing Beecham's Hot Lemon. It's the hot lemon cold remedy with the Beecham's formula. And real lemon. So it relieves cold symptoms like headaches and sore throats quickly. At the start of a cold, put a smile back on your mug with Beecham's Hot Lemon. Who's been eating out of my bowl? And who's been eating out of my bowl? Who's been eating out of my bowl? Who cares? Mummy's got some new bowls. Now, by saving tokens from special packs of Kellogg's Corn Flakes, you can get three cereal bowls. There are four to collect. Nice bowls. Shame those beds are so lumpy. Three cereal bowls from Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Mega Man is back! The Nintendo World News with Mario. Mega Man's more mega than ever. Vaporizing Air Man. Extinguishing Heat Man. Smashing Metal Man into scrap. Dr. Wiley, will this upset your plans to take over the universe? What? Ah, the super robots, the tummy chickens, and the guts dozer before it gets to me. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Wiley. But the last word goes to Mega Man 2. Nintendo. Hi. Laura. You always did stay up late. How long have you been back? About a day and a half. I was just uh, passing by. At this time of night? Are you alone? Yes. Um, no, look, I'm expecting someone. At this time of night? It's a neighbor. Uh, well, do we have time for a coffee? Golden roasted, richer, smoother, Nescafe gold blend. I hope I didn't get you out of bed. Coffee tastes good. Hello. Get out of that kitchen and shake that wood to the floor. Well, come on and shake it on every floor. Liam Perrins, the Worcester Sorcerer.
Allied's big sale is now on with amazing savings on beds. This five foot divan from Sealy is half price. Allied's big sale, now on. Clarence and Catherine enjoying a bit of entente cordial. Happy day, happy day, Careful. Thank you. Watch your, watch your step. I'll be careful. Good evening, Mrs. Dale and Mr. Stanley Fong. Here you are. We are very pleased to welcome you at the Hotel St. Catherine. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Do you want to, do you want to? Will I have a taste of yours? You have a taste of mine. forward all night. <laughs> 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 Oh, yes, 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 I have. Yes, 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 Happy days. Don't you? She said we just have a drink. Well, that's lovely. I don't usually like light wine, dry wine, but that's really lovely. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Oh, I see it. <laughs> Too much uh, run. Oh, great ball, great ball. Then. Ooh, now I've got to... Oh, you just tried to help me out. Uh, sorry, dear. <laughs> No. Uh, who's holding? You one. That was yours. Want another one? You want another one? Yes, yeah, that's all right. That's yours. I could stay here forever. Oh, so could stay. I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so we'll nice. We'll make the best of all Yes, that was right. Oh, that was so beautiful. No, if this had been... Our honeymoon, we couldn't have had a better time. We couldn't have. Lovely, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Fabulous time in France. Now, did the wine go to your head or? Well, it. And did romance touch your heart? Oh, it was there, Oh, don't you know. tell us just yet. <laughs> Let's have a look at what you said about each other. Oh. Well, I picked Catherine because I liked the sound of her voice. It was a real sexy voice. <laughs> and that's, that's go on, really. I couldn't see her. I didn't have X-ray eyes. <laughs> well, I thought Clay was very well dressed, but I would. I, I was more interested in his lovely smile. Well, he didn't have much chance to think much because she'd come around the screen and grab me. <laughs> and so that we just prove it. When we came off the set, Clarence started to chat me up right away. And I, and I thought it was wonderful. He put me at ease. Yes, the wonderful thing about Kate was that we were so compatible right from the start. And I've never felt like with many people like before. Oh, Clarence and I had a lot in common. We really did. 
because he has a son in New Zealand and he's been there for a long time and I have a son in New Zealand who's been there. They were both in the Navy at the same time and actually we, we want to find out if they, they actually knew each other. I could give Kate the prize for talking too much because I used to give her a little sign when I wanted to butt in. <laughs> I think Clarence is a, a gentleman, very kind and thoughtful and he, he, he was so kind, you know, all, all through the trip that uh, I felt like being, like being with him. Kate's best quality is her friendliness towards everybody. I mean, it's not only to me. She was friendly to very open and very... Everybody loved her, and I did, too. Aww. We're both romantic people, and I, I love that in Clarence. And he is, he is very romantic, so am I. Yes, I am a bit of a romantic, and I like love stories, and I re I know anything... Romantic, yeah, I can have a drop of tear even on when I'm feeling romantic. And I love, I, I like romance. Well, Clarence and I hold, held each other's hands all the time. And if we didn't hold hands, we, he had my arm or I had his arm. And we were very close all the time, actually. And, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, I can assure you. We had a kiss in the car, and that's, uh, that's, if you call that romance, but it, uh, it's uh, very much the same as anybody else. Yes, Clarence and I kiss quite a lot. And I it's a wonderful feeling. I'm very, I'm very proud that I'm 87 and also to be on blind date because and there's also romance in it. Now, I've really enjoyed that part of it. Uh, don't think at 87 I'm too old for a bit of romance. I think you're never too old to fall in love and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if I have. Aww. We've made plans to, for me to go to Scotland in the spring when it'll be a bit warmer, I'm sure. But, uh, and also, uh, it might materialise that we might go to New Zealand together later on. The clowns and I like each other a lot. And I know we'll be seeing each other again. And who knows, marriage might not be out of the question. Don't make me wear an hat, will you? <laughs> you have seen each other since then, haven't you? Oh, yes. yes, I took Kate home down to Bournemouth for, for the weekend because I didn't want to leave her in London on her own. Oh, isn't that nice? Did you enjoy Bournemouth? I've enjoyed it. Yes, and I met all his hair and the women. Oh, my, oh my <laughs> hair, hair was out of the court. Believe it or not. Is it hard. very... He's a lady's man, Oh, is he? yes. Oh, yeah. They all had to come and see this blind date. Really? What was your competition like then, Catherine? Oh, I thought I stood up to it, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not get a little bit jealous at all when you met all these ladies, when they came to give you the once-over? At my age, you don't get jealous. One little complaint about our Catherine, our Katie, yeah. you did say she, she talked a little bit too well, much. Well, what woman doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Sorry. Well, it was a silly question. Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we, women, we do like to gossip. Right. But you didn't mind him putting his little mm. finger up to get a word in edgeways? <laughs> Not at all. No. Not at all. <laughs> well, you talked about France being so gorgeous and that if you were on your honeymoon, you couldn't wish for a better place. We couldn't have had a better time if you were on honeymoon because no, everybody no. was so wonderful everybody to us. Everybody was wonderful to us. You were? No, well, we're all dying to know. I mean, I know Edinburgh is miles away from right. Bournemouth. But, I mean, it, is the romance going to continue? Well, Can you right. give us a few hints? What yeah. should we, we what certainly intend to We're going to see each other. Definitely. And, you know, like, when you get to my age, you take, romance takes a bit of stoking up again, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 it's, romance takes a bit of stoking up again yeah. <laughs> at your age, but you're never too old, though. No, you know that I'm stage. You're the first one, no. I'm sure, to say that. No, I'm and not. And you and Catherine got on so well together. We on very... And you think you can cope with this harem, do you? Oh, I yeah. think I can sort them all out. <laughs> 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 now, final last word from you, Clarence. I mean, you sum up the date for me. What would you say to Kate now? What would I say? In an ideal world. Well, actually, if you promised me roses. 
You know, when we were on the show, he says, I'll buy you a bunch. And today, he met me with a beautiful bunch of red roses. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that good? Huh? Well, you know, Clarence and Catherine, they say red roses is the symbol of love. I'm so pleased for you both. And so it much. makes a lovely, pleasant change nice. after mm. Will and Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Clarence and Catherine, well done. time for this week I'm afraid but we will be back next week to see how Juliet and Nigel and Anu and Hannah enjoyed themselves and of course we'll be arranging some more blind dates so until then tra for now toodaloo tra <laughs> We do apologize for a slight technical fault in part one we do hope it didn't spoil your enjoyment of the program <laughs>